my name is Mrs. Ajibike Adetutu Ashabi Udubayo. This is way before Nigeria is independent, right? Yes, before so, independence, yes. Are there a lot of British people in the country? Um, we have British, there are not many. There are few. Most of them um, are there like teachers in schools or nursing, training of nurses. Those are the two important uh, education that uh, is common then. You, you either be a nurse or a teacher. But if you are able to have education up to secondary school, then you can be you can go for nursing. Even you can be a teacher, but to upper grade. What what school did you what school did you go to? Do you remember your primary school, your well, secondary school? Primary school was a um, Methodist school at the body. I went to the boarding house. For higher elementary education. That body house was at Shagamu. It was Shagamu Girls School. That's higher education than elementary school. From there, you can step up, be a nurse or a teacher. But I chose teaching. University then is not a. Uh, they started then. You know, there was some, some you you have some some university then, but that depends on your level of education and how you get on and your choice. If you want to be a teacher, don't you don't have to go up to university before you come to the teacher. If you want to, you can do it. After your certificate, you can decide you want to be a teacher. But you can still be a teacher earlier on in your life. You have a good education. You have a good standard. Because you just can't go to the college without having specific certificate. What, what school do you teach you? Um, uh, before I started teaching, I went for a training at United Missionary College, UMC Ibado. From there, I started teaching at Jebode. And the village very close to Jebode, I went away. From there, I went to Ibado, UMC practicing school. Now, from let's say you teaching at what age? So how old are you at this time? Maybe twenty. 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 <laughs> okay, so then, um, are you now teaching all through to you meet um, my grandpa? Um, and how did you meet grandpa? <laughs> I I was teaching. Um, he was working with a uh, chief. Awolowo and I used to pass that area every morning going to my college United Missionary College Ibado and according to what he said about me that I always refuse to take lift for people. <laughs> <laughs> it's either I walk the distance or take a taxi. But if anybody offers to 
give me a lift that I will always reject. And it's, it's not every every young lady will do that. If they see free lift, they jump at it. And after some time, they started to ask, who this girl is? And from people, he got particulars about me. Because I, the, I thought one of our law was, even the last born of our law was uh, children. Her name was Tokumbo. Tokumbo was in my class. So it was easy for them to get uh, facts about me through Tokumbo. Sometimes he used to come to the college, <clears throat> to the school to collect uh, our lower children. If the driver or the man who should bring them back home was not around, he used to come in. And collecting the, 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 the girl, or maybe the girls, Tokumba and his, uh, her sister, he would ask me for, to give me a lift and I will refuse. Several times he had uh, tried to give me a lift. I would rather walk or take a bus or taxi. I think from there, he, he made up his mind that this one must be special. Who doesn't, who doesn't rush for lift every time? That I would rather walk or take a taxi. One day he confronted me, asked me, why don't you take lift when they offer you? But, well, I explained in my own way that um, if I don't know you, I can't follow you. If I know you, it's a different case. I need to know you before I can jump into your car. After all, where I live is not too far from my, from my place of work. And from there, we started talking. Later on, he told me that he had been watching me. He told me everything about himself. Like he was fatherless. It was like a was fatherless. You see him. But he, his mother died before he left university. He has a lot of things to share between the two of us. Things that can make us feel sad. Like um, I told him about how I lost my brother in America he was studying for medicine. He was ill for a short time and he died. So both of us had things that make us laugh and things that make us sad. So we share it, you know. We share our sorrows and our joys. Then the relationship continues with feelings for each other. What you went through, what you and 
how we overcome, I too was taken to his people. He was an orphan. No father, no mother. But, uh, but uh, his sister is living in Ibado. So I was introduced to his sister. And then um, I think the brother in law, the sister's husband, really took to me, you know, at first sight. He kept on asking for me. When will I come to the house? You know. And from there the relationship grew. By the time we engaged, both of us were thinking about going to England. Well, the plan became reality and we decided to get married. We were married about two weeks before we left for England. With the blessing from both families, his family and my family too. We got married um, at Mayfair's in the home. Mayfair, the reception at Mayfair's. We got married in a court. <coughs> we got married in a court. Um, not far from Mayfair's. So, so back then, the people used to go on their knees. To, hmm? Back then, the people used to go on their knees to propose. No, <laughs> it, it, it didn't. It didn't happen that way. I think we just entered the relationship, knowing that that will be the end of it. We understood what was going on, so it wasn't something that you would have to kneel down and start to say, you know, take it your thing. No, no. We just we started to make plans about our future. That we want to go to England to study. With the blessings of our our family, he has no parents, but he has the, mem the members of his family, like his uh, sister, brother-in-law and some cousins. I had my mother and my father and my uncles uh -huh. and I was living with my uncle at Wayfarer's Hotel. So it was easy to introduce him to my uncle. It is the love of my life. He died so many years back, and I never thought of having any other man in my life, no one like him. So it's, it's the one good thing that I ever done in my life, to make a good choice, stick to it, become more, just two of us, both of us were able to produce four children, four beautiful, three boys and one girl. We studied in England. He studied law. And I studied teaching. He came back. He was working at the Ministry of Justice. I remember Uncle Major, I remember Papa's dad. Mm -hmm. I remember Uncle Major, I know of Papa's dad. Mm -hmm. And so how many siblings were you in the future? In our family? Yes, you and your brother. Oh, uh, well, my brother, the firstborn of my mother, died in America. 
who was studying medicine. Then, I have for long sure my late friend and my sister Ikedola. We are four. How did the how did grandpa pass? I know mom mentioned that um he was supposed to be he was supposed to move to to Amsterdam because he, he was he had a PhD in, in space law, right? Yeah, in law, yes, he did law. Uh, from work, mm -hmm. I think he went to America. He used to go to abroad, you know. So for for sometimes something connecting with the law, or something for Nigeria. Uh -huh. so if they have to negotiation between Nigeria or any other country. A uh, minister of justice will choose somebody they think that can actually do the job. And in most cases, he used to go all over. So, so how, did, how, did he, how did he pass away? Did he fall ill? He had ulcer. He had that ulcer since he was young. Wow. But he was well managed. We have happy home, no, no, you don't have problems that can give him upset. So that, that helps to keep him going. And the four children we had, they enjoy the love from us. So there, we don't really have problem, but we always thinking of what we can do for these children to make them grow well, to get good education, and be able to be independent. And he managed, he helped, because it takes two to dance to dance tango. The two of us understand what we want in life. And in, in little time, even before he died, we, we have almost at the goal of it. And uh, when he died, I had to continue because he had planned for every one of them. And the plan is what I followed. Wow, wow. wow. so he, he had a plan written down. Yes, for, for each one of them. And then he passed. Mm -hmm. Just to follow it. So today you have four successful children. Mm -hmm. You have four successful children. Uh, uh, for, for my, I still have my four children. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> and this is due to the plan. Mm, yes, to the plan. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the children, the way they talk, the way they act. He said, this one will be a good doctor. Mm. This one, the only thing that we are, he couldn't make is he wanted one to be a lawyer. <laughs> Uh, none, none of them. Maybe because he, he died while he was a lawyer, it made them get scared. They don't want to be. None of them take to law at all. Now, when you think about it, um, you never been married. You never dated anybody. No. Now that kind of um, that kind of strength. Hmm? The kind of strength that you have to do that. You don't see it in today's, in today's world. I wouldn't know. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't know. But, um, you know, we started very, not too young. We were of age when we started dating. 
it didn't take us long to understand each other. And we used to sit down and plan things together. And we are blessed. Most of the things we planned together became successful. And we devoted our time, our energy for these children. And it was easy for me after his death to do the remaining job. We tried not to look back. We just moved forward because we used to sit down with them, discuss with them what they want to do or how they are going to go through it. And it was so good. The opportunity came after his death and I was able to help. We had some of the, one or two of them got a scholarship and then, you know, and I worked hard for the, most of the, the expenses of the children. What did it take to raise a family at the time? Hmm? Uh, only you at the time, what did it take to raise the family? To raise the family, yes, the type of job I was yeah, doing. Yeah, no, but more than that, the pressure. The pressure. Of being alone, you know, mm. all of that like. Well, I think the only time that I, I can say I feel al alone was when I sent children to bed. <laughs> <laughs> but I thank God for one thing. The children grow fast. So sometimes I have to discuss directly with the children, one by one, what they want to do. And how they are going to do it. And uh, with the grace of God, we are able to. We are, we are able to, at least if we didn't finish or complete the plan, we tried our best. And today, when we look back, we have cause to thank God that without any help, outside help, with God's help, we cross the line. Thank God for that. What are the things that one should look for or look for and when they thinking of selecting the child? What are the what are the deal breakers? What are the things that they know for you or any woman should look out for when they want to select the right partner? For myself. No, just advice for the younger people. Oh. Because you know, you've been on the earth for 90, 90 plus years. <laughs> Share some information. I have to advise for that. Yes, please. Well, um, it's not easy to advise people. It's very. If they present the partner to you, It is then that you can advise. If you give them four things to look for in a man, and you couldn't, you couldn't get the four. If you get two and a half or three, I think one can move forward. with your mind and advice for someone you think that he had lived a clean and better life. You can move on. You don't have to get your 100% wish. Start from 75 
and develop it, you can reach 100%. In few years, gradually you will reach there. But the foundation must be strong. Very important. Genuine love. What you really need, what you see in a man. What you plan for your future. This is something, it's, it's not all romance. This is something you can sit down and talk about. Then you, are, you, you may not know you are planning your future from just discussing how will you want it to be? How many children do you think we can have? What type of education do you want to give the children? And your behavior to each other at home is very, very important. From there, children start to know what you really call real love. They, they catch it from their mother, their, from their parents. Because children at home discuss about their parents. Parents and children must work together for the future of their children. They know that they are satisfied. The, the failures they saw or they made in their own use it to correct the future of the children. Because I tell you, no marriage is perfect. To me, no marriage is 100% perfect. But you can learn from your, from your mistakes. Learn to say you are sorry when you make mistakes. True love. All we are talking about is true love. Not having boyfriend in the corner. Or you, your mind must work together. Because sometimes we just sit down, my husband and I will sit down Silent, in a silent position. And after sometimes, he will turn around and ask me, Dike, what are you thinking about? And in most cases, we are thinking about the same thing at the same time. It happens so often. Or I ask him, what are we going to do? Which way do we go to solve this problem? Will ask for my opinion. And when he puts in his own opinion, it may be just a little bit of adjustment. And it's, the job is done. This is two people. This you have these are two people with one mind. To start with, it may not be the same. But as time goes on, you understand each other. You appreciate the quota from the other side. And both of you understand because you understand each other and it helps you for other things you have to decide on. What, in the course of your life, what right decision do hmm? you say you have made hmm? in the whole spectrum of your life mm -hmm. so far, I mean, 91 years? Mm -hmm. What are some of the right decisions that you've made and you know that you've made mm -hmm. other than marrying your husband? Well, other than my husband. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, choosing, helping children to choose which school they like to go to. For example, my first son wanted to go to Shokoto. 
<laughs> the time they said Shokoto, I said, ah, why are you going to be, how are we going to get there? So what? My, my husband said, yeah, we have to start from form for Shokoto. And we look out, we waited until the forms came out. And then we got the, the, the form. And then he sat for the exam. And he was successful. When he entered Shokuto Government College, he was like a baby. He was the youngest in the school. And uh, the first time we visited him at that school in Shokuto, we drove from Lagos to Shokuto. The principal was so happy to meet us. Shokoto, they called Dayo. The, they gave him one name. Called Little Dayo, I think they call him Little Dayo, something like that. And they, they said one thing about Dayo. The principal said, one thing about the boy is that no matter how difficult he finds himself, he always finds his way out. Like when they go, when the boys went on strike because of uh, milk. Before the teachers knew what to do, Dario has finished his OB. He said, I told, I don't, and when we find milk, we will take milk. If there's no milk, daddy will say, go and take it like that. Use sugar alone and take it like that. Maybe in another two days, we'll get milk. The principal couldn't believe it. That when others say no, they are not going to take it, that you went to the table and finished it. So. It sticks like that. We live, you know. That we have, we have helped a child. That at home, try to appreciate what your parents give you to eat. Just make sure it's good food. And make it good. We don't allow cooks to cook for us. I do all the cooking in the house. And sometimes daddy helps us to do the cooking. It's, it, it's, it's difficult for two people with one mind to make wrong decision. Unless um, they, are, they don't make it with love. I mean, if you really love your children or you love yourself, the two of you, you your aim is to succeed with this marriage. And so, I don't see where we really, we can make mistakes, but uh, it's not something that bothers us so much because there's always a way of correcting it. So if at first you don't succeed, you can try again. What's your definition of how do you see life as a whole? 
Mm. Now, I haven't, you know, gone up and been born in this is Jabodi. Mm-hmm. You were born in Jabodi. Jabodi. Yeah, Jabodi. Yeah. Born in Jabodi. Jabodi. Studied abroad. Now we have dogs. Have lovely kids. You know, and you are very strong at ninety-one. What What would be your What's your view on life now as a whole? Life. You create life for yourself. As you make your bed, so you lie on it. You try to you try to see the pros and cons of your decision. If you don't if you do it this way, if it didn't come out right, how are we going to correct it? Instead of just doing things without looking back, like, is it, are we going? Are we doing it rightly, or not so good? Sometimes you have to try it. Halfway, if it doesn't, if it doesn't pay much, then you withdraw. But if it does pay, then you move on. And don't forget, it's not one person's opinion. You said it takes two to dance tango. Mm-hmm. Two people with one mind. Not that they can't make mistakes. They may, we, uh, we make mistakes. But it's the type of mistake that you can correct. A mistake that won't become a failure. Uh-huh. Thank God for that. It's a mistake that we can correct or amend. What, what was the difference between the way your father raised you and the way you raised your kids? I mean, the way your kids <laughs> have now raised well, their own kids. <laughs> With my father, it was a polygamous life. It's my, my father alone rules the whole house. It is partnership. Partnership with love. And understanding. So that we are not just, we don't think about self when we are, we are now, we started thinking about the two of us. Then later on, we start thinking about the whole family. And sometimes, when the children were growing up, we used to bring the children into a discussion and decision too. So it's like we move on together. That was why things didn't get so difficult for us when we lost daddy. Because children too now, join the chorus, and we started singing the same song all along. We also do start to do things together, which we still continue up to now. What are your What are your um, opinions on the state of Nigeria right now? Nigeria, to us, when we were younger or when we are growing up, it's our country. If we succeed, Nigeria will succeed. If Nigeria succeeds, we will succeed. It's our own. So the only way Nigeria can succeed is when we really believe that we are good Nigerians. Put in your own quota. And by that, life will move on. 
Nigeria is not for one person. It's for us all. And so, we will move on. We believe it's for all of us, not for only the politicians. And the, I think one thing in Nigeria is, in the newspaper, you can express your opinion. It's either take it or leave it. It's not a one man's business. You go there to vote, vote for your choice. If there's somebody, I, my, who is my choice? If I have a choice, I will vote. You don't have a choice? Tinubu, if I don't have a choice. Do you have a choice? There's Tinubu, there's Atiku, there's Peter Obi. Well, as at present, I can't make up my mind. But through the news, or what you have done in the past, what each has done in the past, and through discussion with other Nigerians, I will know who to vote for or who not to vote for. Right? My own opinion, not somebody's opinion. What's your favorite color? Mm -hmm. What's your favorite color? My favorite color. Ah. Mm -mm. I never knew. <laughs> I'd like to know. Ah. Well. Do you know? I chose blue for a long time for boys. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, pink for girls. And uh, I don't have so many girls. I have only one girl. So believe me, I'm used to blue. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I'm used That's to okay. blue. What's your favorite uh, your favorite food to eat? I like food. As long as it's not bitter in my mouth. If it is sweet, if it is palatable, because you can go to a friend's house and your favorite food is not on the table. If you don't, if you can't enjoy most food that you prepare in your own village or your country, then you find that. You can't, you can't entertain anybody in your house or only, only very few people. And when you go out to, you find out that there are so many things you can't eat on that table, you know. And you just take a little bit. But since we were young, we were brought up in a way that, and the same way I, I brought up my children, whatever, we put on the table on the table. Your mother will make sure that good food is served. When you look at me, I will tell you what I remember. Uh, they me. Um, your dogs, brandy, squadron. <laughs> 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 remember your remember yes. your dogs. Mm -hmm. you, yes. You, do you miss your dog? Uh, but uh, the same thing with. Uh, this uh, little <laughs> you passed it on to me uh, you, this have, one. you had you have you still have Katie, so many Kati, Abby, Kati, Abby. Kati. Kati, yeah. <laughs> i mean you did i came in and i saw hmm? well, well, <laughs> i have dogs at home one is koi koi <laughs> one is bb <laughs> so i mean in a way you still take after me yes aha uh -huh. Because I like dogs. Yeah. Your your grandfather liked dogs. We always have dogs in our house, you know. And then um, up to now, um, with me, 
we do things together, my husband and I. We, we both love dogs because of the children, not because we had it when we were young. We didn't have dogs in our house for, for us. <laughs> but with education and um, with the boys, only one girl. <laughs> Growing up, we don't want them to just go out and play with just anybody. So we started to bring up dogs for them to play with. That's how we started to have dogs in the house. And they enjoy their dogs. They don't have to go out to find friends. So they, they come close to each other. They love each other. They have common love, dogs. I think they can still remember the names of their dogs. I, I, I can't now. But they, they can still remember. And they have dogs in the house. They play with the dog. And that dogs, you know, I, after they lost their father, I kept the dogs up. When they go to body house, they come back. They have dogs in the house. And, they play. and that dogs, you still, I still keep it up till now. I have Koi Koi and um, Bibi. Uh, I have Koi Koi and Bibi. Now, the other things I remember, I remember your um, Christmas party. <laughs> yes, that Christmas party. Um, when your grandfather died, the house became lonely. It's like darkness just set in. No light, no, nothing to talk about. The joy was somewhere where we couldn't touch. So, I started to gather children together. Your children were, you, you are talking about Christmas party now. I started at Christmas. I said, bring your friends in so that we have party and that we cook for them. We have, we have I think father left us a gramophone. Uh -huh. So, that will be the, the sometimes when Dayo, I remember Dayo brought a young girl to the party, the first party, you know. And then that's why we started Christmas party. Just after their father, we started to have a father's death, we started to have Christmas party. Anything to bring joy, a bit of forgetfulness to the tragic we had that is the cause of the christmas party and they bring their friends and uh, we keep on buying presents for them things that we used to do when father was there and that is uh, the party so another thing that i remember when i think of you is the uh, sound of music ah Sound of music. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they will show documentaries. On yes, the news. Yes. Yeah. And that news was to help you in your education and to know what is going on in your country and abroad. Because I used to tell them, I don't know where future is going to take you to. But if you keep on in Nigeria, you won't go past Nigeria. But if you know about the countries of the world, how the people dress, what they eat, as a teacher, I think that one brought that into me, that you never know where you will be tomorrow. But if you know a little bit about each country, it will help you. If you have to go there, it won't be new to you. So that's where, I mean, see, see what happened today. Where are you? None of you in Nigeria. But you come to Nigeria, it's a base for you. But all these things that you just brought in, and I allow you to have friends, bring your friends in. I want to know your friends. I want to see your friends. So, not that they, they, they ever had a friend that I don't know about. 
So, well, thank you for reminding me that. Ah, <laughs> anymore. Do you remember when you used to put rub in my eyes? Rub. rub. rub <laughs> I remember <laughs> you will sleep. He will refuse to sleep. He will be going from one place to another, causing trouble. And the trouble is too much for my daughter. So I put not my rubble, in my toilet. So I will put my toilet at the, at the base of the eye and pie. He will sleep. Otherwise, he will be going from one place to another, picking this, taking that. So I just thought, well, I'm going to put, I know about uh, about mental in there. He just put it there. He did, you know, he kept his purpose a little bit. Then after that, he will, he will sleep. And very troublesome. And you know, seeing him troubling my daughter, I said, "Yes, I know what I'm going to use uh, to make you sleep if you don't sleep." And that's why we started putting mentholator. <laughs> anyway, thank God he didn't do you any harm. <laughs> At least you remember it. Yeah. Uh, oh, that, was <laughs> that is beautiful. <laughs> thank you, dear. That that's from your grandfather. Wow. <laughs> grandfather. Wow. He's still there. I, wow. I don't miss it. Let, let me take a picture. The moon used to be there. You will see where, you may not see the letters, but you see where the name is uh, pressed. I will be your official boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I and, I, I, and I'm sure your grandfather will appreciate that mm, mm, and sign on it yes. agreed <laughs> pass on a message to them and to the next generation well let me first of all give all my thanks my appreciation my love to our maker who made it possible for me to sit down here and relate the time of sadness that has turned to the period of joy. It started, the life started with joy, understanding and appreciation. Then suddenly, everything, every sunshine turned to darkness. But for the love that brought us together, show us sunshine all the time. Make it difficult for us to look at the darkness that had been there. And uh, we move on. It wasn't easy. But God helped us to move on. I can't remember when things really went really bad or darkness turned in. Turned sun sunshine just turned to darkness. I can't remember. We, there, there is always, there is always sunshine, and sometimes the darkness came. But with prayers and supplication, we sit down on in the same place, and you see the darkness moved away, either slowly or with speed. That is the work of God. We are grateful for the good God who make it possible for us to come together, to still be one. 
without looking for anyone that is missing. I think we should thank God for that. It's not because we are good. It's not because we have the magic to have it. But it's because we believe in our maker, the God who created us. He gave us the time of joy. And when sadness came, he didn't abandon us. He sent people to comfort us. There are books we read, whereby we know that if we move on, there will be sunshine after darkness. Today, I see sunshine. Since that time, this is the first time that I'm able to sit down and connect myself to my past, the past that was darkness, full of tears. But thank God today, the Lord turned that tears to joy, darkness to beautiful sunshine. God, help me to overcome. I will say most of my difficulties he erased all the darkness in my life. What do I see now? I see beautiful lights. Daytime lights. I appreciate what God has done in my life. Thank you, Father. Children, I wish you the best of love. Always know where you came from. How you started. Praise God for what he has done for you and move on. May God help you, all of you, children and grandchildren, and great-grandchildren that will come after. That God will bless you all. Love from your grand or great-grandmother. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I love you all. You look beautiful. Huh? <laughs> How are you? Hmm? Hmm? Yeah. All right, let's go and eat now. You're looking good. Uh -huh. Thank huh? you, dear. God bless. The ones there. Come Come How are you, dear? How are you? I bought you some gifts. Hey, hey beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, okay. Thank you. <laughs> I miss you. I miss you too. Yeah. I am nice one. Yeah, looking so beautiful. I, 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 I dare you to live to 120. <laughs> I want that. Did you hear that? Yeah. I you have to see your children's children. Oh, Lord. When are getting married? Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm uh, waiting for that. Okay. So, you are going to give me the first great grandchild. Okay, Grandma. By the grace of God. Uh huh. Are you see now? I'm asking. How was Grandma? Beautiful. 
Bye bye. Bye bye. Love you. Alter Daily, the alternative network. Mm-hmm.